everyone, I'm Joanna Penn from the creativepen.com and today I'm here with my friend Joel Friedlander from thebookdesigner.com. Hi Joel! Hi Joanna! Hey, so today we're going to talk about print book design and especially interiors. Now Joel is a real expert on this, so um, I particularly, I guess I want to start with Joel. I mean you know I'm a, I'm a real ebook fan, I read ebooks. Is print still a great option for self-publishers? Yes, well, I think uh, print is a great option for self-publishers. And the fact is, Joanna, you're a novelist, so you are perfectly situated to take advantage of being an ebook author, going straight to digital. I mean, let's face it, novels are doing great in the ebook space. Uh, genre novels like your fantastic thrillers and um, books like that but there are lots of books you can't do uh, as an ebook really effectively and there are a lot of people who still love to buy print books and you know if you look at the statistics you can see the ebooks are making a tremendous amount of progress uh, but it's mostly at the expense of genre fiction and uh, non-fiction books, uh, high-end uh, publications from big-name authors, art books, uh, textbooks, workbooks. There are so many kinds of books that we publish. And many of them, you know, uh, you'd have to really compromise pretty bad to get them into an e-book. And also a lot of people want to buy that book if you have an author you just love. I mean, a lot of people just love owning the books, reading the books, having them on their shelves. So the print books... You know they're selling. Uh, 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 we're selling a lot more ebooks, but print books are not slowing down. So it's a really great time to be a self-publisher of print books, also. Mm. And actually, I got some feedback the other day from uh, a client of mine who said that she sells a lot more print books because she's a speaker. So I guess there are some people whose business model, you know, goes with with print books. Would that be right? Well, I was talking to someone who does a lot of speaking also recently, just a couple of months ago, I was interviewing, and she told me that in the last uh, 10 years, she had sold over $4 million with the books in the back of the room. Think about it. That's unbelievable. Now, she is, a, a, you know, a, an unusual case. But the fact of the matter is, every time I speak, I sell books in the back of the room, and um you know, if you want to send a book reviewer your book at like a traditional newspaper or magazine, hey, they want to get a copy of that print book or your advanced review copy, your ARC, uh, whatever it is. They want to hold it in their hands. So, uh, you know, uh, print books aren't going away anytime soon. Mm. And, um, you know, it just depends on the author and the kind of book you're publishing. So, you know, I do agree with you, but i got to ask you, you know, because I'm in London and, of course, the Brits are still very enamoured with the High Street Bookstore and we have Waterstones here. But in America, I mean, of course, Borders has disappeared. Now, I've been reading that Barnes & Noble is having problems, you know, there's all these rumours. What is going on with print in America and, and, you know, where do you think that's going? Well, you know, a lot of what happened in America was a lot of retailing moved to these big box discounting stores. And this started happening 20, 25 years ago. And gradually, this has also had a pretty big effect on, uh, you know, most retailers, uh, including bookstores. Because if you go to, like, one of these big box stores like Costco or someplace like that, you know, they're selling books. They, they have a book section. They have very few titles of which they sell a huge number each. So that matches their retailing. But of course, that's not good for authors particularly because you have to be uh, kind of lucky or very famous to get on that very short list and, and use that distribution channel. But I have to say, you know, we do still have a, very, a thriving independent uh, publishing and book selling community in the United States. You know, uh, we focus on these big stores because they make the big news. But, I mean, if you have ever gone to the big trade show, uh, the BEA, you know, that is run for independent bookstores. Mm -hmm. That's what it's all about. It's the um, all the independents who go there. And, um, you know, the show seems to be going on fine. The publishers are all showing up, showing their books, and there's still a lot of books. Now what's happening, there's this kind of opposite movement, Joanna, that's very interesting, where people who are really love books who are just part of the book community 
are starting uh, bookstores, in, indie bookstores, because there's such a benefit to have in your town or in your neighborhood. Uh, to have a really active, community-involved, independent bookstore is a tremendous advantage. You know, they relate to the community, they bring authors in, they run events. And so, um, you know, people buy books that way, too. And look, you know, remember Amazon? <laughs> they are still selling, no matter how much, you know, they're trying to push their Kindle they are still selling a ton of print books because, mm -hmm. you know, if you want a book of uh, photography or if you want to have that special memento or you want to just buy that book at a discount, people go to Amazon to get their books and, you know, those boxes with the big smile on them, they're still flying out of those warehouses. Yeah. So, um, yeah. you know, whatever it takes, people seem to be very attached to their books. You know, we still have shelves full of books, people buying books, people giving books as gifts people buying books at events, and uh, it doesn't seem to really be slowing down that much, to be honest with you. Yeah, I would agree with you, and I think the uh, the whole independent bookstore thing is actually really positive, and I think, as you say, that the model right now means that it's great for those at the top, but everyone else doesn't have much of a chance. So I think with independent bookstores, you know, independent authors will probably have more of a chance to get their books into physical bookstores, which is fantastic but um let's talk about the practicalities of of doing an independent print book and i wonder if you'd start by giving us a few of the real telltale symptoms of um an amateur print book so we know what to avoid maybe like you know your, your top three amateur things yeah well i've been fighting this fight for quite a while joanna because i'm pretty sure we had the same conversation a few years ago yeah but you know, uh, I was a, a judge for some book awards last year, and, um, you know, I get to look at a lot of books, let's face it, many more than the normal person, and people are always sending me books or asking me questions about their books. And, you know, a lot of do-it-yourself authors, people who don't have the funds or just don't want to go and hire a professional book designer are trying to do these books themselves. Now, I don't see anything wrong with that, but, you know, the book is very deceptive. It looks like a very simple, prosaic object. I mean, come on, we grew up with books. There couldn't be anything simpler. But when you go to actually make one, it turns out there's lots of little decisions you have to make that really, uh, if you don't make them right, your book can end up looking kind of silly. Uh, a good example is I get a lot of books that people are doing in Microsoft Word because that's the tool they have. And... You know, there are some things that are really hard to do in Word. Like a lot of people haven't figured out if they could put the running heads in on their page, they can't figure out how to get them off the chapter opening pages. Mm -hmm. So you see these books with chapter opening pages that look very nice, and there's a stupid running head right on the page, and it shouldn't be there, and it looks horrible. And, you know, right away you know, okay, this book was done in Microsoft Word, and they just couldn't figure that out. Uh, another example specific to Microsoft Word is a lot of people don't know how to control the hyphenation part of Word. So, uh, for instance, I was judging these books, and I must have had a stack of uh, 10 books, and they were all unhyphenated because obviously the authors had done them in Microsoft Word or some other word processor. They didn't know how to do the hyphenation. Now, that wouldn't be a problem except that there's a reason we hyphenate the, the lines and that is so they fit better. And in these books, there were big spaces in the lines, and it just looks horrible. And I hate that. Uh, so that's two. And, uh, you know, another, another thing I see very often is uh, uh, people forget pieces that they should have in their book. Uh, several of these books that I was judging, for instance, had no copyright page. It just wasn't there. And I kept looking back and forth. No, it must be here somewhere. And no, it wasn't there, or they don't have any front matter, you know, like in a print book, you have a, maybe a half title, a title page, a copyright, um, you know, and that's what a book should look like. And in these books, I don't know if they've been staring at the ebooks too long, <laughs> but you know, you open the book and, oh, well, it was chapter one, the narrative just started. And like that, you know, people are used to having books be a certain way. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean that it's right or wrong, better or worse. That's what we're used to. We call those conventions. You know, we just agreed like about 500 years ago that that's the way it should be. 
So that's the way that we uh, books generally are put together. Mm -hmm. So these these kind of these kind of signs or signals um, will signal to anybody who knows books that this book is kind of an amateur production. Yeah, no, those are fantastic. And actually, one of the things that um, has annoyed me in the past, and I know like four years ago when I, I tried to do it myself and haven't tried yeah. since because it's so bad, is getting the page numbers wrong. Um, because, you know, a page number, the odd number has to be on the right hand side. That's right, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. So when you get that wrong, you don't even realize until you have a proof copy of the book and then you just go, oh, no, that's so basic. And yet I got that so wrong. So what what are some of the things, you know, you've given us a few things that are wrong. So what are a couple of the things that people need to remember when they're doing this? Well, uh, you know, if you're doing your print book for uh, print on demand, then you just have to remember that, you know, you have to have a number of pages that's divisible by two. You have to have an even number of pages. And this is surprising that people don't get this. But, you know, there's a piece of paper and on one side is one page and on the other is another page. So you have to have an even number of pages. You know, if you print your book on offset, which, you know, some uh, many self-publishers do because there are lots of advantages to that. You know, generally the number of pages you have in your book, the total number of pages should be divisible by 16. That's how you're going to get the best quality book at the best price. Uh, so, um, you know, also you want to make sure that you have margins that uh, really work well. Now, I've seen a lot of books, Joanna, that people are doing print-on-demand with CreateSpace or Lightning Source or Lulu or whoever, and all these people charge by the page. Yeah. So authors thought, oh, yeah, well, I know how I could make this book cost less. I'll just use the whole page, you know, make it go right out to the margins, and I'll fit so many, so many words per page of less pages, fewer pages, it'll cost me less money. But that's really a bad idea. And I've seen a lot of books done like that with these tiny margins. Mm -hmm. And you can't even, like, hold the book properly because there's no place to hold it and uh, without obscuring the type. So um, I forgot the question. but That's all right. No, that's, that, that, that's, that's really good. And there, isn't there the middle margin is called the gutter? Is that right? That's I learned gutter. that. I, yeah, I just, that, I just that's learned another that. thing. Like, if you put your... Your, your type going too close to the gutter, and that's where the book is bound, the binding uh, side of the page, then when you open it, you can't read all the way around to uh, read the whole line, and people end up opening the book too far, they crack the spine, pages start falling out. It's kind of a disaster. <laughs> so there are real practical reasons to do this. Yeah, there are. And, and the other thing that gets me is fonts. Now, I'm, I know you're a font guy, you know, and I'm just not good at fonts. And I don't think people really understand what fonts you can use together. And, you know, what do you think about fonts? I mean, what, what is the most amateur font going in a print on demand book? Yeah, well, that would, pr that, uh, that would probably be a runoff between uh, Comic Sans. Uh, a, a typeface that all professional typographers love to hate. And um, I would say the a near second would be Papyrus. Oh, I hate Papyrus. <laughs> which was popularized because it was included free with a lot of software, and then all of a sudden it was everywhere. And mm -hmm. typefaces go through this kind of uh, fashions like that. And uh, there have been others in the past. And basically it kind of destroys the typeface for everybody to use because it gets so overused, so poorly used mm -hmm. in so many places for so many different things that, oh my God, you can't even stand to look at it anymore. <laughs> so um, now uh, uh, I've had authors tell me, hey, look, I did the heads on my book in Comic Sans and it sold fine. And I always tell them, you know, that's a testament to your book because your book was so good you could even overcome like crummy uh, typography. So good for you. But, you know, we want to give our books the best chance we can. So we generally use uh, old-style typefaces for the text and a contrasting typeface, maybe a sans-serif typeface for, uh, you know, your heads, your chapter titles, stuff like that. Okay. And putting them together is, is actually kind of fun. If you're not type-challenged, like, like you are, Joanna, it can be fun to see, well, what goes together and creates a different kind of feeling for the book because these type designs have different qualities and they really give you a little, little different tone or mood to the book depending on what you use. 
Mm, no, I find that fascinating. Now, um, as I've said, I'm, I'm, I just have no patience for interior design and you helped me with my first book, which was fantastic. And, and um, I know that you now have some templates that you're going to tell us about, which will save people time and frustration. So tell us about these templates. Yeah, well, we're going to change the world, Joanna. That's that's it. We're going to rock the world right here. And that is, you know, I've been fighting this fight. You know, I spent two years arguing with people about you shouldn't be doing a book. You shouldn't do books in word processors. They're not typesetting programs. And, okay, Joanna, I lost the argument. I yeah. gave up. I was wrong. And uh, I'm here to, to, to totally own it and... Um, what I decided was, instead of fighting with people, trying to convince them that they shouldn't be doing what they were obviously doing anyway, and they weren't going to stop doing, um, that maybe my job was to make those books better, mm -hmm. uh, get a way to help people make them, make them better. And of course, I've written a lot of articles about all the stuff we're talking about, so you can figure out, you know, should my running head go on my chapter opening page, or what, how do I number the pages? But now I've taken the next step, and what we've done is we've uh, started a, a new site uh, off my book designer site called BookDesignTemplates.com, and uh, we have a small selection of really beautiful book designs. And the way it works is you can buy one of these templates, download it right away. Uh, they work with Microsoft Word, and these are only for people who are doing their books in Microsoft Word. I want to help you. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to I want you to be able to produce a beautiful book without killing yourself. Mm -hmm. So all you have to do is download these templates. So we have various styles. Now each template comes with the fonts that I've picked out mm -hmm. for that design. So you don't have to worry about what fonts to use if that's not your thing. On the other hand, if you already have a beautiful collection of fonts, you can swap out yours. But these come with perfectly legal fonts that you can own and um, distribute. Uh, they come with a PDF uh, that shows you what the book is supposed to look like in case you kind of get tossed around. And uh, it also comes with a very extensive formatting guide that leads you right through the process. So all you have to do is take out the sample text that's in the template, put your own text in, and use our pre-formatted styles. You just click on the, your t chapter head and hit the chapter opening style, and it'll all pre-format the margins are worked out, the number of lines per page, the running heads, the page numbers. You've got about five different kinds of pages. The front matter is all in your book already. Mm -hmm. All you have to do is put in your own information and bingo, you've got a really nice looking book that's put together properly. That, that sounds fantastic. And a couple of questions off the back of that then. So what size is it? Because I know that some people want a 5 by 8 some people want a 6 by 9 How does that work? Well, what we're doing is we've got uh, six designs. And each design is available in three sizes. Now, I picked the most common sizes that indie authors use because that's who these are for. So uh, I've got three sizes. We use 6x9, which is very standard uh, mm -hmm. size for paperbacks or hardcovers, for that matter. Uh, then we've got 5 and a half, eight and a half, which is the other most popular size. And then we've got a slightly smaller size, which is 5 and a quarter by 8. Mm -hmm. And I love that size for shorter novels. I used it for my own book, The Self-Publisher's Companion. Mm -hmm. And I've done a number of novels in the last couple of years in that size. And I really like it. It's a little bit more intimate. It will make a little bit larger book, but, um, you know, that's a trade-off. You have to decide whether you want more pages or you want a smaller book. It just depends on, you know, uh, what kind of book you have, who you're selling it to, and so this way you have a choice. Mm. Now, you, so you pick your design, and then you figure out uh, what size you want, and then you can get a template for that size. Fantastic. And then uh, what about the cost? So I pay, you know, I'm probably paying about £150, which is about $200 right now for someone to do it for me. So how does that compare with your guides? Okay, so uh, our, our formatting guide will show you how to put these together. Uh, but you do have to know how to use Microsoft Word. I mean, uh, you know, we're not going to teach you how to cut and paste. 
Uh, you kind of have to know that already. But if you know about that much, you can work your way through the formatting guide. It's step by step. It's got lots of big pictures to show you exactly what you should be doing. Um, and here's how the prices work. Uh, if you want to get a template to use on your book, uh, it's $37 US. Mm -hmm. Now, you get the whole package for the app. You get the template, you get the fonts, you get the formatting guide, you get the PDF. And uh, obviously, if you have any questions or problems, you get those answered too. Uh, now, here's a wrinkle. If you want to, uh, let's say you're a series author like you, Joanna, you've got a series of three books. Yeah. And you want to get a template and you want to use it on all three books because you want them to look the same. Mm -hmm. Okay, I've got an answer for that too. We call that a multi book license. Mm -hmm. And so you can get the same template and take, get it as a multi book license for $97 US. And you can use it on as many books as you want of your own, your own books. So, Joanna, if your series went out to 20 titles, use that $97 template, you're good. Forever. Going to save some money. Yeah. <laughs> and then our last version is a commercial license because a lot of authors are getting into the business of helping other authors. Now, you've got somebody who's helping you, mm -hmm. and that's terrific. So maybe your formatter might like to offer you one of my templates mm -hmm. uh, because, after all, these are pretty nicely done, and you can go and look and see exactly what they look like. And if your formatter wanted to buy one to use as a commercial venture... Uh, to do other people's books, the price on that is $197 US. But, you know, you get a commercial license, uh, you know, I think you're going to make back that fee really fast. Mm -hmm. You will have, you know, you'll be able to uh, brand them with uh, our book designer brand. Mm -hmm. So, um, now, in addition, we really want to deal with people who want to do both print books and ebooks because, come on. All novelists are doing print books and ebooks now. And these templates are really designed for novelists, memoirists, people who write literary nonfiction. In other words, anything that's not heavily formatted. That's where we started with. We're going to expand this line of templates, but this is where we're starting. And um, so if you want to convert it to Kindle, what we've done is we've created a Kindle version of each of these designs. Now, obviously, on ebooks, you can't do things like fancy running heads because there aren't any. Mm -hmm. So, in the ebook version, we've stripped out all that for you mm -hmm. and we've um, put it together so it's going to convert into an ebook super easy and look really nice. Mm -hmm. So, if you want to get the Kindle version, you can get the exact same template package with that extra template added to it for like an extra $5. Yeah. So, it's really a great deal. Um, you know, the single book price uh, is forty-two dollars for the whole package, including the Kindle template, uh, the ebook template, I should say. And um, I think it's we tried to make this as affordable as possible. Uh, we put a lot of work into fine-tuning these templates. Uh, you know, Microsoft Word is not really designed to do books. So I'm going to yeah. say it again. You know, and I'm going to answer this other question that people keep asking me. Will these books look professional? Well, yeah, they probably will look pretty professional to most people. Mm -hmm. If you're a professional typographer, you're going to know that this was not set by uh, Adobe InDesign or Quark Express or one of those high-end, hard-to-learn uh, typesetting programs. Mm -hmm. It was done in a word processor. But other than that, probably nobody's going to know. Yeah. Oh, I think that's great because I, I do think there's a lot of emphasis in the indie world around book covers. I think people, that, that message has come through quite clear and everybody understands that's important. But the interior, I also think, is really important as well. And I think this will solve that problem at a decent price. So um, I shall thank you on behalf of uh, everybody for, 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 <laughs> for sorting this out. I think this is definitely a gap in the market. So excellent. So once again, where can people find you and find the templates? Okay, so uh, people can find me at thebookdesigner.com. But I think people should head over and check out these templates because they're very reasonably priced. You can download them right instantly. It's kind of fun. You can start playing with them. And all of the template products are at bookdesigntemplates.com. We're also giving away uh, to anybody who wants to get on our email list um, a really good PDF 
that's 24 pages long, Joanna. It's called The Book Construction Blueprint. And it actually describes how you put a book together. Every part of the book, chapter openings, pagination, widows and orphans, everything that happens in the interior of a book that's properly done is described in the Book Construction Blueprint. And I am happy to give it to anybody who wants to head over to bookdesigntemplates.com and sign up. It's totally free. You just need your email address. And um, while you're there, check out these templates because they could save you a huge amount of time and frustration. And you're going to end up with a book that looks good. Fantastic. Well, thanks again for your time, Joel. That was great. Thank you, Joanna. It's been a pleasure.